out there. Prasad, welcome to theCUBE. Dave Vellante. Thank you, thank you for having me. Good to see you, this is my co-host John Furrier. Hi John. Okay, so, I, think, um, I think Dave, I want to start it off by just saying that um, the big news here is the sizzle, the sizzle of VMC World's cloud and big data, but the stake has been this whole services solution message. There are people making money out there doing solutions, whether they're consultancies or startups, and it's growing, there's more needs out there. There's a lot of demand. So tell us what your opinion is on that and your angle on the solutions market in general. I think the solutions market is the ultimate uh, optimization of value on our core platforms. So, uh, if you do our jobs right on our platforms, the solution demand should be insatiable. And uh, my job is to really make sure that that is indeed the case, and uh, drive solutions that are easy to consume and uh, easy to scale. Prasad, you know, it's 27 years at, at Intel. We were we were thinking you were going to try to break Pat Gelsinger's record there, but. Um, so. <laughs> But uh, that's quite a, quite a career. We had Pat on last year. Uh, Pat's been great to us. He's been a guest on theCUBE many, many times. One of the things he talked about was the Intel culture, you know, like the army marching to the cadence of Moore's Law. And he said, you know, EMC's culture, eh, not so much, but maybe that's changing a little bit. So first of all, what brought you to EMC? And uh, talk a little bit about the, the, the cultural differences, maybe the culture shock. No, that's a great question, because uh, after 27 years in, in one company, um, moving to another company was not the top of mind for me. Um, but as I was looking at where the industry was going from a solutions perspective, uh, it was clear, as Joe said today, that uh, the industry is going through one of those big transitions that happens once in 20 years. And uh, the confluence of cloud computing along with big data uh, was not just a theoretical premise when I interviewed for this job. Uh, it was clear that this company, EMC, was on a path to acquiring assets that were going to make that reality. And uh, cloud has been my passion from my Intel days. Uh, and the ability to move up the stack from silicon to actually build solutions uh, was a huge opportunity I couldn't pass. So that's why I'm here. Yeah, and Intel is such a fundamental component of the cloud. Obviously, EMC is just, you know, and VMware bet the farm on, on Intel. Um, and so now your current role um, let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, basically, you take these industry solutions, uh, and and it could be you know third-party products, you know EMC products, put them together, and then demonstrate how they work in a real-world customer environment. Um, what does that do for a customer? I mean, obviously, it reduces some risk and maybe speeds up deployment. But what do customers tell you about that? Well, the customers care about uh, two key values, right? One is, hey, is this going to make a big shift to the value that I serve my business with? And uh, second is, is it going to uh, make a substantial shift in my bottom line cost of running the business? And so uh, the goal of uh, what we are trying to implement from a solution standpoint is uh, make it dead simple to implement, uh, not give them a bag of parts, and make the cost of integration so hard that uh, we don't go anywhere, and each of these projects becomes a managed program. Uh, secondly, it's got to be changing the game. Uh, it's got to be a game changer for the business that uh, the solutions are intended for. So if you take FSI or you take oil and gas or healthcare, can we take the collection of our products, uh, be it uh, Green Plum, be it uh, a VNX storage environment, or be it our security capability, uh, or be it our content management with uh, Documentum, and can we stitch them together to create a total solution that makes a huge difference? Uh, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, so you're doing, uh, obviously you do a lot of stuff around SAP, uh, Oracle, Microsoft Solutions, a lot of the traditional enterprise apps. Um, have you started, I mean, I'm sure you started, but, but when will we start to see, or can you give us some examples of these so-called big data applications emerging in terms of proven solutions that you can actually point customers to? Yeah, we are in the early days, to be honest, uh, but uh, a lot of what I'm seeing, and this goes back to even uh, uh, my own days as uh, a guy who used to run Intel IT, uh, is the refactoring of uh, the core ETL environment from the OLTP environments, uh, the refactoring of uh, costly, you know, multi-million dollar nodes that run the analytics environment into commodity hardware and uh, enabling massive scale-out parallelism in, in the compute model for analytics. And so uh, we are absolutely seeing the implementation of uh, use cases for analytics that leverage that technology. Uh, the big enterprise applications are not moving there overnight because of the inherent nature of the mission criticality of these environments 
and the inertia of moving from a legacy to the new environment. It's complicated. Uh, it's <laughs> complex. Uh, but where we see opportunities is uh, emerging usages that uh, have been uh, hard to crack from an analytics standpoint. So if you take the FSI community, uh, a key focus is can we enable real-time risk management as part of uh, portfolio and risk uh, on the trading floor. Uh, so here you have um, you know, 30 to 40 million messages a second of um, uh, market data streaming in, and can you leverage that market data into meaningful analytics that say, hey, based on this, uh, our risk portfolio has got to shift uh, based on the nature of the bits of data coming in. That is massive ingestion of data, real-time information translating from that data to making decisions on portfolios. Uh, the question, question I have for you is, you know, obviously the Intel background is a stellar environment for dealing with massive change, Moore's Law, for example, Dave mentioned. We're living in a time now where the real-time web, or real-time internet, mobile and web, is really, really relevant. Um, cloud is scaling. It's a system, it's an operating system. So you know, we, we've always admired Pat Gelsinger for that systems view. And so you have this infrastructure operating environment going on. That sounds a lot like Intel to me, <laughs> except it's not a chip. So can you give us insight into how you build those solutions? How you look at that, I mean, can you? Well, absolutely, I think the, the notion of uh, the data center itself having a lot of analogy to a computer uh, with uh, the, the core platform, the BIOS, uh, the operating system, uh, as a means to establishing simplicity and abstraction on which you run third-party applications is uh, not a far-fetched idea. Uh, in fact, that's what we are collectively doing with uh, VMware and EMC and uh, Cisco in many ways. Uh, at the compute platform layer with VCE and VBlock, uh, we are converging the compute network and storage to a much more simplified model and above that, we are driving the abstraction of uh, a set of orchestration for management of these resources and implementing applications with ease directly by end customers uh, through this notion of uh, self-provisioning, right? So uh, taking that concept into a broader implementation through third-party applications, uh, enterprise applications, uh, so I is live very in, much the I, focus. I live in Palo Alto, California, where the sandbox of Silicon Valley is in my backyard. I live there and I love living there. It's some of the best places to live and it's innovation. So that is enabling a lot of uh, entrepreneurship and intrapreneurship at big companies to build on that abstraction layer I mentioned. You guys are enabling that. Um, how are you guys looking at that? Obviously big data announcement today is something that we've been talking about, uh, but that's an explosive market, the software, this new mobile apps, Facebook apps, enterprise apps, the consumerization of IT, it's happening. Absolutely. Okay, Accenture on earlier, I mean, <laughs> tell us <laughs> what's happening. Well, the way we are looking at it, and I'll give you my solutions perspective, uh, is uh, I think innovation for solutions is going to happen with a very deep partnership with uh, the key industry players in the enterprise. So uh, our goal is to establish uh, basically an R&D lab in Santa Clara, uh, in, in Silicon Valley, uh, and look at innovative new usage models. Uh, and let's just take the hybrid cloud as an example. Uh, the hybrid cloud has got two or three key challenges. One is uh, how do you enable uh, this notion of cloud bursting? Uh, when you have a, a peak demand, uh, can you essentially elastically increase the compute resources on the public cloud and run your application uh, without a, a, a blip in the SLA? Uh, these kinds of usage models have uh, known issues on uh, network latency and bandwidth, known issues on identity management, uh, and the implementation of a policy-based orchestration that has full visibility both on the private side as well as the public side of all the resources. And there's only one way I know how to solve these problems, which is to go deep with a partnership with the Cisco's or the SAP's uh, or the Microsoft's and really have a, a joint lab innovation environment and uh, knock them out one by one. So uh, that's what we're going to go do. So we're here with Prasad Rampali, who's the Senior Vice President of Solutions Engineering at, at EMC. We're talking about uh, what we call proven solutions, what EMC refers to as proven solutions. Prasad, what's your vision for this, this group, uh, this initiative, um, which you know, started a number of years ago and I think um, really started off as, okay, hey, we've, we EMC have to be in the business of proving out 
these solutions, and you had to earn your way into the minds and hearts of customers. You didn't, it's a lot of hard work, uh, as, you, as you well know. Um, and so I feel like you've, you've sort of gone through that phase successfully. What's your vision for the, for the future of this group? Well, thank you for asking. That's a great question. So I've been with EMC now for six months, and uh, we are launching what we uh, affectionately call as Gen 2 of the solution evolution. And, and Gen 2 has got three key parts. The first is, you know, you can create solutions all day long, but uh, you have to have the ability to scale it uh, across the thousands of customers very quickly. So how do you establish a, a scale model from the time you create a solution uh, through the direct sales force, uh, through the indirect channel, uh, in such a way that this penetration model is moving at 6x times the speed uh, is a key focus for us. Uh, the second is uh, shift left. And, and the idea here is for us to create game-changing solutions, we can have solutions as a wrapper after the fact when we have already launched our products. We have to be in situ, integrating. What was that one again, the second one? The second one is uh, you know, shift left, yeah. design in solutions Got it. with our platforms. And the idea here is we want to integrate uh, our platform capabilities with uh, third-party solution frameworks uh, very deeply at the time of launch, not mm. six months or two years after the launch. Yeah. And uh, that would require a completely new development uh, model with uh, our products, very deep partnerships with uh, key ISVs and uh, technical partners. Like SAP. And like so SAP. On. And uh, really change the game on some differentiated feature. Uh, let's take SAP and as an example. And do you have a joint lab in Santa Clara with SAP, right? That's the yeah, today we do, yes. Okay. Uh, but we want to take that to a whole different level, but today it's mostly a showcase kind of environment. Uh, we want to take it to a, an R&D joint development environment, both here as well as perhaps in Waldorf. And uh, we want to be able to demonstrate integration points between SAP's landscape management at the application level all the way with visibility to uh, the intelligent storage system and how we enable that level of uh, uh, policy-based management that could be happening at uh, an application layer that SAP cares about, but the infrastructure just adapts to it uh, through that level of integration. So that's the third, so, so, so scale, and, shift left, and... And the third and one is, is really um, solution R&D. Hmm. Uh, when Todd started this organization about five years ago, clearly the focus was to enable sales. And uh, I think he did a fantastic job. Uh, I'm building on that and saying, hey, let's go shift left integrate solutions with our core products and differentiate features, and uh, even go two years out where uh, really look at the next big technology inflection, right? Flash is viewed as uh, the technology inflection for storage today. What's the next big one that's coming? And really preempt that, if you will, with uh, appropriate solutions that could be tied with uh, that R&D process going forward. Yeah, I think that's a great vision, Prasad, because I would imagine it's very difficult um, to take a, a, a quote unquote proven solution and then and, and, and then scale that as you say. So a customer says, well that's not me. <laughs> can you do that for me? And can you then they'll become one offs. How do right. you scale that? And so if you can crack that problem, that's that's game changing. Um, and then the other thing is, I mean I've talked to a number of, of CIOs, application heads, infrastructure heads about this capability, generically, whether it's EMCs or IBMs or whomever's, and um, you know the infrastructure guys love it. Right, because of course it's their job. Right? It's going to make right. my job easier. It's going to lower my risk. I'm going to get stuff in fast. That's all. I get that. Um, CIOs, they tell me, well, it's good. My guys like it. You know, it doesn't really make a difference to me. And the, and the application heads say, well, it's somebody else's problem. So, this notion of scale and shift left and, and this solutions R and D that starts to appeal to a much wider audience. And uh, I think it's a great vision. No, I'm terribly excited by it because I think. Um, with this recipe, if it takes off in the next three, four years, uh, we can produce game-changing solutions that perhaps will be as important as our own platforms and uh, will drive differentiation both in terms of top-line revenue as well as bottom-line gross margins. Uh, Prasad, this is very interesting. Prasad Rampali, Senior Vice President of EMC's uh, Solutions Engineering Group, um, some, somebody that we've really focused on a lot. We've advised our clients in the Wikibon community to take advantage of these uh, uh, offerings. They're some of the best freebies in the business, right? A lot of them, most of them, maybe all of them are, are free, which is fantastic. Um, 
And of course the idea is it leads to other sales, why not? But, but they really uh, uh, reduce the risk, they speed the time to market, they help you share best practices, and it's, just a, it's great to see the investment, and, and Prasad, I love your vision. So thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing. Well, thank you for having me.